I remember being in graduate school studying art history and archaeology and one day the professor asked what we intended to do with our degree. Some said, well, you know, do research. Others said, uh, work at a museum or become an assistant professor. And I said, I want to make films. I want to publish. I want to go out there and share my passion with the world. Well, that stopped the conversation right there. I think I'm the luckiest man in the world because after many years, that's exactly what I'm doing. There's a lot that's wrong with the world, but the one thing we do have, the one thing we can all enjoy, regardless of our politics or faith or ethnicity, is the beauty that past generations have left for us. And when I look in the eyes of my audience and I sense that they're getting it, that they see things they've never seen before, <laughs> that is the greatest thrill. The historical context, this is not what the Bible tells us, this is what the archaeological evidence tells us. I've always been interested in a lot of things. I'm fascinated with the early cultures of Mesopotamia and Egypt, for example. Just imagine, almost 5,000 years ago, they produced a civilization that would not be matched until Roman times, and then again, not until the mid-19th century. Where does the story of Jesus begin? According to the Gospel of Mark, the oldest gospel, it begins right here, on the borders of the River Jordan, where Jesus has come from Nazareth to join the movement of a dissident called John the Baptist. And so I'm incredibly blessed to have a publisher, National Geographic, who shares that enthusiasm. My first book, for example, uh, The Biblical World, tried to place the stories of the Bible in the context of their place and time, in terms of the local literature, the geography, the social and economic conditions. And lo and behold, the thing became an international bestseller. And then we did a follow-up book applying the same idea to the historical Jesus as a Jewish rabbi preaching in early first century Galilee. And that became a bestseller in just the first six weeks after release. What this tells me is that people want to know about these things. Regardless of what faith tradition you may have, we are fascinated by the historical context to figure out what shaped an individual like Moses or Jesus or Muhammad for that matter. And so my next book, Story of Christianity, looks at the complete arc of Western civilization from ancient Rome to modern times. And it asks the question, what has Christianity achieved in these two millennia? Not just in terms of doctrine and liturgy, but in terms of ethics, in terms of science, art, and architecture. In short, in terms of fostering human dignity. Every monument, every artwork has a story to tell. And it is these stories that truly make a work come alive. I've made a number of films, uh, one about the art of the great Impressionist Édouard Manet, and one about the art of a 20th century genius named Walt Disney. Right now we're producing a film about the world's most famous portrait, the Mona Lisa, narrated by Morgan Freeman. But the subject, in a way, doesn't really matter. Come see my here. What must man do to einfach ein Panzer zu bekommen? What do you have to do to buy a tank? <laughs> when you're in front of an audience talking about the historical Jesus or the similarities between Judaism and Islam, 
Or a painting like Leonardo's Last Supper. The goal was always the same, to create that spark, that sense of excitement that allows us to experience things like never before.